good morning. We're back into the property show on the all-new CNA 938. This is Asia First Weekend Edition. Uh, in the house this morning is our very good friend Paul Hall. Paul is the Chief Mortgage Officer at I Compare Loan. We were talking about the effects of a potential interest rate uh, cut in the United States. And of course, uh, the ongoing US-China trade war. Has this taken a hit on us here in Singapore, property-wise, especially when it comes to the investment part of the property market. Paul, welcome back into the program, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's talk about the, the investment, uh, how the U.S. trade war has affected businesses and uh, perhaps uh, their sentiment in uh, perhaps property investment. Um, property investments, I think, in Singapore, uh, people are still very, very excited about property because there is this irrational, um, you know, Thing about property, Newport. people, so people just to yeah. Feel, right? It's just like, it's just this this very irrational thing that that is not just my house, but I want to have this uh um passive income, earn passive income, let the money work for you, you know, borrow from mm -hmm. the bank and so on. So if you see advertisements, it's always like uh work from home, earn money, passive <laughs> income. Uh, the, you you won't have in advertisements that says. Uh, work very hard. You know, come to the office. Work very hard and uh, and work very hard so that you can earn an income. So you will so you nev can never never hear. Your yes, though, yes. Yeah. You never hear, hear advertisements like that. You hear uh, always um, lazy advertisements, meaning like you know, easy job, a lot of pay, don't work, get pay, let people work for you. So mm -hmm. so that those kind of things are what people are looking forward to. Are they Even still though, looking for it? Are they still buying into this port here in the Singapore scene? People love to not to work and, and get paid, uh, and that's a fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, would, I would, yes. <laughs> so so I, I'm really not, not sure whether, uh, you know, so, so people still would love property for, for whatever reason. And with the US-China trade war, has this affected, you know, obviously businesses would be hesitant to make uh, new investments or new forays into yes. uh, growing uh, their business. Or even hiring people. So how is this? Uh, has this trickled down into uh, the property scene and the borrowing scene, for that matter? Yeah, if you if you look at the vacancy uh, rates of commercial properties, uh, they are. I mean, of course, we are talking about some some of them are great A commercial officers and so mm -hmm. on. They are always uh, in demand because of the the stature uh, of those pl places. So when you look at the rentals going up, and if you if you look at um, the rental rates, they are always going up. And why they are going up is because th there are a lot of grade A offices being rented out. What about those that are not rented out, right? So do you average the rental for, you know, including zero, mm -hmm. zero rental for, for vacancy rate? Or do you just measure the average of uh, all those that are rented out? So that's the question that I have always. Always, it's like if you have a rental rate of ten dollar per square feet for across the whole Singapore for commercial offices, right. but there are like a twelve percent uh, vacancy rate for all those offices. So there are twelve percent of properties or, or the square feet of the units available that is zero rental. So do you average the zero out as well? We probably don't do that in in this statistic, right? So then, what actually is the true? Uh, rental rate. So, so there is vacancy, and um, the vacancy is, uh, in, in my opinion, is uh, slightly uh, getting worse. And you have, um, but on the other hand, the rentals are not really dropping that much. Mm. Um, and the rentals are not dropping that much as far as the index is concerned. It's because of a lot of you know the headlines and people renting out for for good money. Um, they are also uh, REITs, uh, you know, or those those uh, co-sharing right. co-sharing offices and so on. They actually take up very good uh, space and rent out for high rents. Even though you you say that oh it's very cheap, I can start offices very easy. I just take one desk for mm -hmm. five six hundred dollars, and and it's if you have two person, they will lock you up in a small room. Well, not actually lock you up, but <laughs> but it's like a uh, hundred and fifty square feet. Um, office in, in glass cubicle and you have two desks and, and one whiteboard and that's it, two person. It's like very cheap, $1,000, but, but hang on, it's $1,000 for two, per, two desks. Uh, and of course, you can go out and use some meeting room and pay some money for meeting room. You have a, 
luxurious uh, lounge area which you can hang around and you can meet like-minded people. But those kind of things are driving up the actual rents. And of course, the other culprits are, are REITs. Uh, sorry if uh, any REITs owner are hearing this. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Well, they're, they're <coughs> getting a decent return on it. So yes, and of course, every time you, re uh, anecdotally, every time you renew the lease, uh, the rent goes up. Um, yeah, the rents go up uh, for, for offices and so on. But, but the REITs have holding power. So they can hold on to 5-10% uh, vacancy rate and not have it rent out and yet not drop the rent. So in other words, right, the vacancy uh, is being absorbed by REITs. So for example, you have some of the major REITs, in industrial REITs, and you have vacancies like you walk around, it's, it's empty. Maybe five, five floors of B1 industrial park area. And you would see that at least maybe 20% is empty or maybe 15, 20, 25, 30% are empty. They always put works in progress, a renovation coming, but it's actually empty, right? So when it's empty and yet they do not drop the rent for the other 70%. Mm -hmm. um, and while they keep the other 30% empty. So, so my question is that where's the logic uh, in that? Indeed, we are taking the temperature of uh, the Singapore property market with a very good friend, Paul Ho. Paul is the Chief Mortgage Officer at iCompare Loan. We talked about uh, the effects of uh, a potential rate cut uh, interest rate-wise. We talked about the effect of uh, the US-China trade war. And we talked about the rents. Now we're going to take the in the commercial arena. Now we're going to find out about the residential space when Paul and I come back after an update of these messages. Uh, you're listening to the property show on the all new CNA 938. Uh, this is Asia First, the weekend edition. Thank you.